totally awesome or totally frightening. Look at this. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for new technological innovations that have attracted controversy. On the one hand, you do sort of get the feeling you're being watched. But on the other hand, it does help us learn. And that's the main reason we're here. Overall, the pros outweigh the cons. Number 10, DIY CRISPR gene editing hacks. Sometimes I still am afraid, but it's not a fear of like, something bad happening necessarily. It's more of a fear that like, you can't control it. CRISPR is a scientific breakthrough for which Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier won the 2020 Nobel Prize for Chemistry, and it has an incredible amount of promising potential. Within the last decade, DIY kits have allowed people to administer CRISPR technology as a form of gene therapy or biohacking. Instead of breaking into and manipulating computer systems like typical hackers, they're focused on hacking living organisms with the hopes of curing illness and in some cases obtaining superhuman powers. Concerned that these kits could be misused by people who aren't medical professionals, the FDA has warned Americans against using these kits and have made them illegal for sale in the United States. The importing of DIY kits has been banned in Germany and governments have publicly advocated that such gene editing techniques should be left to the experts. Using one of the inoculation loops, we're gonna gently spread the bacteria about the plate. Let it dry for 10 minutes, put condensation. Okay, same so, deal. Same deal, yeah. Number nine, generative AI. Who is uh, Leslie Stahl. Stahl. Um, So it gives you some. Oh my of... God, uh, it's wrong. Oh, is it? It's Excellent. totally wrong. Not to be confused with artificial general intelligence, generative AI can produce words or images by identifying existing patterns. Tech companies have been breaking ground in the last couple of years with this type of AI, such as OpenAI with ChatGPT. Businesses see opportunities for automation and efficiency, but several people have met generative AI with resentment. If you look at the peak demand during the summertime, if the data center don't reduce their load, there could be a blackout. Critics have worried about its effects on the labor market, and there are also concerns about its extensive use of water and electricity. There have been several debates about the merits of art and the verbal content created by this AI. Regardless of what people think, it looks like generative AI is here to stay until it's replaced by something more powerful. A lot of the AI companies really heavily lean into the term publicly available to uh, justify how they got their training data. But anyone who produces content would tell you just because you see an image online doesn't give you license to use the image. Number eight, genetically modified mosquitoes. Hoping to cut down on mosquito-borne diseases such as malaria and dengue fever, scientists at the British company Oxitec have developed genetically modified mosquitoes. The genetically modified mosquitoes mate with the females and spread their affected genes. As a result, their offspring are unable to reproduce because they're compromised, thus cutting down on the number of mosquitoes that can infect humans. You're changing their genes. We're giving them one extra gene in this case, uh, or a, a small package of genes that, that do things, yeah. Such technology has life-saving potential and has been adopted in countries like Brazil. However, critics who see potential side effects have concerns about ethics and unintended consequences. It sounds like we could be veering into Jurassic Park territory. As we go driving through the area, every time the app bips, we just open one of the spots in here and the mosquitoes will fly around and do their job. Number seven, self-disseminating vaccines. One question puzzling scientists is how to administer a vaccination among a wildlife population. One approach that has recently been cultivated is self-disseminating vaccines where animals in captivity are infected with the disease and sent out into the wild. The infected animals would act as vectors, spreading the disease to other animals and ideally giving the overall population immunity. Some scientists are hopeful that such vaccines could be used to prevent zoonotic diseases that could cause the next pandemic. However, many in the scientific community have been skeptical of the effectiveness of this method, along with raising ethics concerns. Number six, neural enhancement chips. Fully implantable, it is battery powered, it is wireless. All of this is being done over Bluetooth protocol. Neuralink, a company co-founded by Elon Musk, is experimenting with this type of technology. Among the applications of these chips, Musk hopes to connect people that have paralysis to computers and allow them to move and communicate with their minds and potentially restore eyesight to blind people. The device is designed to interpret your neural activity so you can operate a computer or a smartphone by simply thinking about moving. No wires or physical movement are required. However, this technology has not been without controversy. 
In setting up experiments, Neuralink has been accused of euthanizing a dozen monkeys, which is something that Musk has denied. There has also been concern about potential policies mandating these kinds of chips in the workplace or by the government in everyday life, with some states moving to ban such practices. Neuralink is not the only company working on this technology. Several others are also testing their BCIs in paralyzed volunteers. Noland now joins that small group as Neuralink's first patient. Number five, face recognition technology in public spaces. Once a recurring pattern is learned, actions may be programmed based on that pattern. Sample actions include detecting faces, transcribing conversations, calling reinforcements, or looking up a license plate. This kind of technology comes in many forms, and you've no doubt come across it, such as when you unlock your phone or go through airport security. Critics point to concerns over privacy, while others are concerned over inaccuracies and racial bias, as it often fails to recognize black faces. People that were later found innocent have gone to jail because of being wrongly identified by facial recognition. Several cities and countries have enacted or are planning to enact policies to heavy regulate facial recognition technology, if not outright ban it. To train the software, the researchers also use photos of faces with clearly defined expressions. Their system for analyzing emotions can detect anger, joy, rage, and grief in real time. But what can it be used for? Number four, certain gene editing technologies, germline editing. If gene editing was done in embryos, then any DNA changes would pass down the generations. The hot issue at this meeting is whether scientists should even be allowed to do research to modify the genes of embryos. Germline editing refers to the editing of germ cells, cells that develop into eggs and sperm, with the hope of changing the DNA of humans to make them immune from certain diseases. The process is so controversial that it is banned in clinical settings in several countries, including China, the United States, and the European Union. One safety concern is the unintended effects of modifying germline cells, which are referred to as off-target effects. It's an evolution of, you know, pre-implantation genomics. We have selective abortion. We're already choosing potential for genetic disorders, etc. It's just one next step than just maybe being able to tailor those genomes um, for certain traits. Another concern is mosaicism, where genetically edited cells and unedited cells could disrupt treatment and result in unwanted health conditions. The World Health Organization is working on a set of rules that can make germline editing a more acceptable process for concerned countries. We need to figure out how to balance the risks and potential rewards of gene editing, which is going to be tricky because everything that's being done tends to get mixed together. A meticulous professional scientists with freewheeling biohackers like this guy. Number three, 3D printed ghost guns. All right, Rob, it's day two. It's been about 18 hours of printing later and we have what looks more or less like uh, the frame of a gun. Nowadays, 3D printers are able to manufacture parts for ghost guns, which are firearms that don't have a serial number to identify them. Because ghost guns are untraceable, they are commonly used by criminals who can assemble them in their own homes. One high-profile use of a 3D printed ghost gun was the killing of United Healthcare CEO Brian Thompson in 2024. Kalina says these are dangerous for those with bad intentions because you can just order the parts online in a kit and build it at home. State lawmakers tried to pass a bill banning manufacturing a gun at your home, but it failed in 2022. Because of safety concerns related to easy access, several states in the U.S. have passed laws banning either ghost guns, 3D printed guns, or both. What's happening now, people are experimenting on different things. That makes this trend even more ominous. It allows them to... With some criminals, Larry says, finding ways to 3D print metal parts that would normally need to be purchased. Number two, killer robots. With the advancement of artificial intelligence, we are reaching an age of killer robots in warfare. Several countries, such as Bolivia, are concerned with the absence of human control over potentially deadly weapons. More than 30 nations and groups, such as Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, have called on the United Nations and the Convention on Conventional Weapons to come up with international policy to ban such weaponry, or at least heavily regulate it. Some critics of this technology have said, why try to make it look like humans? After all, they could be any shape at all. Well, proponents of the technology say that it's to make it easier for them to fit into a, an environment already built for human beings. However, several countries such as Russia and the United States have no desire to slow down the development of such a powerful tool. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. AI Deepfake Technology So the software is pinning my eyes and my mouth to the center of the frame so that it's easier to align with JLo's face. While many deepfake videos have been a source of entertainment, such technology has disturbing implications in areas such as identity theft and national security risks. It is all too easy for bad actors to use deepfakes to spread misinformation, further making it difficult for us to separate fact from fiction. There's been this huge explosion of like, oh my goodness, we can't trust anything. Yes, deepfakes are eerily dystopian, and they're only going to get more realistic and cheaper to make. Several countries have taken steps to combat the negative effects of deepfakes, such as South Korea banning the technology's use within 90 days of an election. In 2025, the United States enacted legislation that criminalized the use of deepfakes in revenge porn. This, this is what I'm talking about. It fooled you, and I'm being serial, but you don't even know what's real and what isn't. That's the problem with deepfakes. That's why we all have to take it serial. Which of these inventions do you have a strong opinion on? Let us know in the comments. Now, with a technology called deep fake, you can get screwed over and lied to in ways never before possible. 